Jamaica Plain, it meant that in one way or another, even though you might not have had family, you had family. Brenda Rodriguez Andujar was born and raised in Jamaica Plain. I bought my prom just here on Center Street in the Latin Quarters. Center Street. Washington, you bump into people that, although they were your friends, they were your family. That's how we all treated each other here. Newcomers to Boston, Rodriguez Andujar's parents moved here from Puerto Rico before she was born, so she grew up appreciating that sense of community. We were here for one another, we'd support one another. But when it came time for her and her husband to buy their first home, they couldn't afford to stay. It was sad, definitely, to move outside of Jamaica Plain, but it's still where I will come back and find what I need to get or eat. Rodriguez Andujar also comes back to JP to work as deputy director at the Hyde Square Task Force. We've been around for 31 years. We started as a small organization trying to make the neighborhood better. Selena Miranda is the nonprofit's executive director. Over time, we've evolved into the, a creative youth development organization where we're using Afro-Latin arts and culture to engage young people in the out-of-school time and also do what we call placekeeping, right, which is about preserving the history of the neighborhood. That history includes a large Latinx influence from an influx of Cubans, Puerto Ricans, and Dominicans during the latter half of the 20th century. When you look at where Latinx groups congregated and began to have a presence in Boston, Jamaica Plain was historically the receiving area. But now, due to the soaring cost of housing, the number of Latinx residents here is dwindling as gentrification has been happening in the neighborhood and we've seen the character of the neighborhood change, the idea of preserving and calling it out has become more critical. One of the community's pivotal preservation endeavors was the campaign to name this section of Jackson and Hyde Squares with bustling Center Street down the middle, Boston's Latin Quarter. In 2016, Boston City Councilors approved the measure, and in 2018, the Mass Cultural Council designated this area the Latin Quarter Cultural District. We need to make sure that folks recognize that while who can afford to live here has changed, and the reality is that we haven't gone anywhere. If anything, folks have found other places to live where they can afford, but they keep coming back here. Part of the mission of the Cultural District designation is to support the community's 125 businesses, 65% of which the city says are immigrant owned. I want to make sure that my son understands that when he wants that particular pastry with guava, he can come here. This is where he's going to connect with his culture, even though he doesn't live here in Jamaica Plain. Now, years after making it official, there's a renewed effort to strengthen Boston's Latin Quarter as a cultural district and increase its visibility. When folks see people that look like them on the wall or people that their mother knows about or listens to or their father knows about, there's a sense of belonging. Ivan Richiez is one of the dozen or so artists who worked on a new 160-foot mural in Mozart Park, unveiled in November, that celebrates Afro-Latino music and dance. I think the importance behind having a piece like this in the Latin Quarter and for there to be a movement behind magnifying the culture here and raising the voices here is that it preserves the quality of life. The graffiti writer was born to Dominican parents and grew up in Jamaica Plain. This really fed my soul. Through his art, he was able to pay tribute to the musical icons he grew up with, like Johnny Ventura and Fafita Lagrande. She talks a lot about, you know, the struggles that women go through. Like all those songs my mom would play, so I was like, she would be great. I don't think she's gotten her flowers yet. Let's put her up on the wall. It's critical for us to tell the full story of who we are. There's definitely a lot of beauty here in this neighborhood from the sounds to the colorfulness to the smells to the people. This is a neighborhood that people should get to know, that people should definitely visit. We're a melting pot. That's what America champions itself to be. So let's actually honor that and continue to push that forward. All right, in 2014, the Hyde Square Task Force acquired the 100-year-old Blessed Sacrament Church, which is located right next door to their offices. Right, and they're working on a plan right now to convert the parish house into 50 units of affordable housing and then also have in that area an event and performance space, which would be a huge benefit to the community. So awesome. All right, coming up, serving up...